Welcome on back to the 4th and 30 podcast. You're joined here this week by the same four you've been watching for the past two months. I'd like to thank Keith Bradshaw for that sweet guitar riff he played for us. And happy birthday to Keith, by the way. Just turned the big 3-0. But the slick... Yeah, missed it big time. Whiff. But the, uh, the Selection Sunday just ended, and so we're going to go over some NCAA tournament stuff. So... With that being said, we're going to hop over to the West bracket. So, guys, where do we see the West bracket ending up? You got any upset games you, you're kind of pointing at? Any really good matchups that you're excited to see? Or, you know, just, you know, who do you think is going to come out? So, in the West bracket, um, that's where Mizzou ends up uh, against Oklahoma. That will be a fun game to watch. Um, Agreed. You never, know, you never know what you're going to get from Mizzou, though. Um, uh, they could come out and uh, score some points for once on offense and be unstoppable, or they could come out and not be able to hit a shot like they do for six minutes at a time during games and allow Oklahoma in that game. Um, I do like Mizzou in that game. I feel like they're going to probably win that one, but I think that's probably the best game in that bracket. Um, and then California-Santa Barbara, um, 5-12 upsets are the biggest uh, pick for upsets. I actually see a good chance of them getting through Creighton. Creighton's been through a lot the last couple of weeks. Creighton did look good in their conference tournament, but um, I think uh, that 512 is one to look out for. I think Santa Barbara has a good chance there. I like the uh, the Wichita State Drake, whichever one comes out of the play in game against uh, USC. I don't know a whole lot about USC, but those teams tend to do fairly well in the. I'm not calling upset alert, but that's definitely a game I'll watch um, because I think it has the makings to be an upset alert. Wichita State and Drake perennially, perennially are, are pretty good in the tournament, um, or at least competitive. So that's the one game I've definitely got circled to watch when it comes to a possible upset. In this one, I can't see any one, 16s over 1s or 15s over 2 like we got blessed with a couple years ago, but... uh. So no big upsets, but that's the game I'm going to watch for sure. Uh, I agree with you on the Southern Cal games. So about Southern Cal, they started out 18 and three, but over their last eight games, they're 500, and they they're kind of not playing their best ball coming into the tournament. So I could definitely see that upset happening. Um, really looking at this region, I will watch the Oklahoma Missouri game. A little Big 12 flashback for Missouri, so that'll be fun. Um, however, I don't see a lot. I don't really see a low seed making it very far in this bracket. I mean, you got Gonzaga, who is clearly the number one team in the nation. They've beaten, you know, they've beaten some of the other top teams. They beat Virginia, they beat Iowa, um, and a couple others. So, um, but but as far as Gonzaga, Iowa, Kansas, Virginia, I think it's going to be pretty much chalk in this region. Um, I, I will be interested to see Gonzaga, Virginia, because. Virginia plays a style that teams, they will stay in the game. So it's it's really hard to blow them out. So that could be, Gonzaga could be on upset alert there um, just because of the style that Virginia plays and the experience that they have. So yeah. um, you, oh, sorry, Carl. No, I actually, uh, I, I guess I have kind of a hot take here. So <clears throat> I have USC making it to the final four in the West. And here's why. So they did start the year really hot. That is they hot. have they had they have been struggling here of late, but I think they find it. I, I really do. They've had some time to reset. You know, you eighteen and three to start the year is not a fluke. And so I I see them. I, their toughest one is going to be Sweet Sixteen against Iowa, and I don't see anybody in the top half of that bracket that have like would be super nervous about, you know, Gonzaga, they are coming to the tournament undefeated, but like Gonzaga is Gonzaga. So I actually have USC making it to the final four and it, you know, there is going to be some upsets along the way, but I, I think they find it and that they get there and surprise a lot of people this year. So this bracket so actually, isn't very hot for me. Um, no real hot takes. I'm I'm pretty big on upsets usually when I'm picking my bracket. But in this, in the West here, I have the four top seeds making the uh, the semifinals of this bracket. Um, 
But I, a lot of it to me comes down to if what Iowa does, you know, the way Iowa plays in a bubble setting, like with the uh, NBA last year with the heat getting hot, I think Iowa is one of those teams. They shoot the ball so well that in a, you know, a limited fan arena, um, you know, I think they can get really, really hot and maybe upset some teams, but they can look pretty bad at times too when they're not hitting shots. So I think if anybody's going to challenge Gonzaga, uh, Kai said it with the way Virginia plays, I think Virginia is going to be in every game they play, good or bad, whether they're playing a better team or a worse team, it's going to be a good game from the way they play. But I look for Iowa to, if they get hot, They've got a chance, and it depends really how Luca Garza plays. He carries that team. Um, so, you know, if he gets hot at the right time, if the setting's just right for him, he's good enough to carry a team all the way to the Final Four, but you'll just have to see. So, going back, um, I left this off. We haven't had a lot of time to look at these brackets. Um, obviously, they just came out. We're doing this right after they came out. Um, I actually had UC Santa Barbara. I said being Creighton. I actually had him beating Virginia as well. Um their best player is a senior guard. Um, his name's like Laughlin. He's averaging like 16 points a game. Um, he is a great one-on-one player, um, and we all know how senior guards do in the tournament. Um, I actually, with the way Virginia plays, sometimes it benefits them, sometimes it kills them. It's like the old Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you let teams that aren't as good as you stick around too long, and you don't put them away. Senior guards can punish you, and I actually have UC Santa Barbara playing Gonzaga um, in the Sweet 16 here. So I actually have a 12 in the Sweet 16. Other than that, um, I think Gonzaga is the best team in the country. Um, Iowa is a very, very good team and will give them a tough time. Um, Kansas actually, I think, can give Iowa a tough time, though, too, in the Elite Eight. Kansas oh, has been yeah. playing a lot better lately. Um, as long as they're full health and uh, they get everyone back from their COVID leave, um, I, I, that's that Kansas-Iowa game will be a very fun one to watch. Um, but I've got Gonzaga coming out of here. Well, one more thought on the, talking about Kansas. I, I do like Iowa, and they are very fun to watch, and I agree that in this setting, their shooting could kind of take over, kind of fit, but they don't play much defense, and so that concerns me, and a potential Sweet 16 matchup with Kansas, a Bill, you know, we all know Kansas, and they've been playing better. I see Kansas knocking off Iowa, um and uh getting to this elite eight i see gonzaga coming out of this bracket they're the most well-rounded team uh the fewest weaknesses and they have this year other than you know years in the past they've been they've tested themselves the only thing that worries about my worries me about gonzaga coming in tournament time is over the last two months they haven't played anybody because all their their schedules front loaded and yeah they were the best team then but the question is are they the best team now because all these other big conference teams are playing good competition for the last two months, getting warmed up for the tournament. Gonzaga's kind of just been coasting. So that does concern me about Gonzaga. I've got one more thing about this bracket, and I'll keep it short and sweet. But we all know, all four of us being Missouri boys, or from Missouri um, originally, that I am very, very, very hard on Mizzou basketball and always have been. I've only watched four or five of their games this year because I just have a hard time rooting for them sometimes. But that team plays defense. They struggle to shoot the ball, like somebody mentioned earlier. But, like you said, in the bubble setting, you don't know what's going to (laughs) happen. There's a Mizzou repping Mizzou right now. Um, You don't know what's going to happen in a bubble. But the four or five games of Mizzou that I watched, they play tremendous defense. I watched them play against Arkansas. Um, That was one game that stuck out to me. Um, and you never know, you know, if they get if they get hot on offense and can actually knock down some jumpers with the way they play defense and with Martin as the coach, I love his intensity. Um, they can upset somebody. I, I'm not even going to say they're going to get past Oklahoma, but they have the potential to pull off a couple upsets and maybe make a deeper run than Missouri has in the last 15, 10, 15 years. Yeah, they beat two top eight teams Illinois in the country this Arkansas. year, Illinois and Arkansas. I mean, we've seen what Mizzou can do, but they're so streaky. I mean, it just depends on if they're hitting shots or not. Their defense is amazing. They got Denard in the – or uh, what's his name in the middle? Tillman. Jeremiah Tillman. Yeah, Tillman in the, in the middle. middle. Brain fart. Tillman in the middle. He's a beast. 
Um, but if nobody's hitting outside of him, teams just double him every time he touches the ball, a triple team him every time he touches the ball. Someone's got to be hitting shots. Well, like you said, they play great defense, but they also have a great point guard in Pinson, which helps come tournament time. So they do have that going for them. All righty. So we're going to move on to the East Bracket here. Uh, East Bracket has Michigan as the one seed. So I do actually see an upset in the East Bracket. Um, 14 Abilene Christian over Texas. So Abilene Christian, they, you know, obviously they don't play a whole lot of ranked opponents throughout the year, but they held Texas tech to their lowest score this year at 51. And they played a pretty competitive game with them. So I I think Texas is going to be that team that kind of tries to look past them, probably looks on to that BYU or Michigan state UCLA. And I, I think that's going to be one of the, lower seed knockoffs this this time around is Abilene Christian over Texas. The the East region, this looks like a region that's going to make some noise. I it, Just on paper, there's going to be some upsets to me. I mean, you got Michigan sitting at 20 and 4. They've been reeling lately. Uh, they're going to be without Isaiah Livers um, for the indefinite future. So Michigan really worries me. I think they're going to get upset. And uh, they got to play a LSU team in the second round potentially that just made the SEC championship. So I see Michigan getting beat in this bracket um, just due to not playing very well recently and uh, having an injury affect him. Uh, my my sleeper pick to make a deep run here is out of this bracket, Georgetown. They just hell yeah it is. They just handed Sucker. Creighton a God dang it a twenty five point uh, won their conference title. Uh, by 25 points, Patrick Ewing has his team playing great. Um, they got a great point guard in Javon Blair, who averages 16 points per game. So my eyes are on Georgetown. Um, but on on top of that, you got Texas, who apparently is going to get upset in the first round. I don't think so. <laughs> they just won their tournament as well, and they've been playing really well. And I can't help but root for Andrew Jones. So shout out to Andrew Jones. Uh, I love watching you play. That took kind of uh, took away my fire for this bracket. Is I thought maybe maybe I was going to be the only one that had Georgetown over Colorado, but apparently three not. Three of the four of us had Georgetown. Okay, over well Colorado. then it wasn't a very hot take at all. But <laughs> I look for Georgetown. They're playing so good right now. I look for Georgetown there. I don't see them winning the game after that with uh, Florida State, but I will be watching that Florida State Greensboro game. I think that has potential to be a a good one, maybe. Um, other than that, it's pretty well straightforward for me. Um, I like UConn. I don't. I don't think they're like Final Four team, but I like UConn to make a pretty deep run. Um, and BYU can shoot the ball, but you know it'll it'll just have to depend on whether the bubble uh, pays off or hurts shooting teams, like we said with Iowa. You know, B, BYU can get hot, but you'll just have to. It's gonna be game time to see. So um, it's really funny that both you guys brought up Georgetown because they're the 112 seed that I don't think is going to win in the first round. Uh, they were playing really well in the Big East tournament. Uh, before that, if you look, their record is 13 and 12. Um, so they did get hot in the Big East tournament. So I see where you guys are coming from. But in the not so great Big East, they were 13 and 12 this year. Before that tournament, I think 10 and 12 or 9 and 12 to finish the season. Uh, I mean, I play the hot hand i guess um i'm not a big fan of them though um but bringing up michigan lsu will be a tough matchup if they have to play them in the second round florida state if they did beat lsu would be a tough match on the sweet 16 michigan's definitely the one seed um that i see having the toughest time making it very far um and a team to look out for michigan state they are in a playing game and they have beat two of the one seeds this year so michigan state is a team to look out to make a run. They beat Illinois and Michigan um, this year, so they had definitely have some big wins this year. Um, coached by Tom Izzo, uh, you know how he is in March. Um, it's a scary team to look out for there. I definitely think they'll beat BYU. Texas is a good team, so that'll be a tough matchup for them there, but I think they're capable of winning that game. Um, so, yeah, Michigan State, my team to look out for um, the lower seed. I do actually have – um, I haven't picked this bracket yet because I was busy with my daughter. Um, honestly, I think uh, there's a good chance that Florida State comes out of this bracket, to be honest. 
I think Florida State is the four seed would be my pick, just glancing at it right now to come out of that bracket. I think Florida, te- Florida State is a team that can make a deep run, but looking ahead to how this bracket plays out, I'm going to put my money on Michigan. I know they haven't played very well recently, but I like I like their team. I like Juwan Howard as a coach. I think it'll be Michigan-Bama in the finals of this bracket, and I, just, I see Michigan winning it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to – I'm, I'm thinking Michigan gets knocked off, like I said. I, I like Alabama in this bracket. Alabama's had a great year. Um, it's their highest, you know, seed ever. And I think the SEC was a good conference this year. I'm going with uh, Alabama. Yeah, I, I'm also going with Alabama. That's who I have wrote down here to come out of the East. I just, you know, a lot of the teams in their half of the bracket, Kelsey made a good argument for Michigan State. But I, I, I can see them coming out of the East just – from the sheer aspect of I don't see Michigan getting there. Michigan's been kind of hot and cold a little bit. And yes, they've won the majority of their games, but some of them are pretty darn close. Um, And, you know, yeah, LSU could knock off Alabama. You might get an eight seed out there, but I can see Alabama coming out of this bracket. So, but, you know, Georgetown could too, because when you steal something, you run away with it. Well, and, <laughs> and UConn, Cody referenced UConn. UConn's a sleeper as well. They've won seven out of their last eight games. Dan Hurley's got them playing the best they've played all year as well. So this this is going to be a fun bracket, I think. I do think this will be the most fun bracket. I think it'll be crazy. We were just talking about before we started, too, that we don't know how this year is going to play out. You usually get some upsets sprinkled in every year, some big ones, some small ones, whatnot. With the bubble setting, the COVID season, the the no fans, whatnot, you really don't know what to expect. My gut feeling thinks that the better, stronger teams are gonna are gonna have an easier time this year with the uh, the limited crowds and whatnot. But it's I mean, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if we see some big upsets this year. And moving right along to the south bracket, we got Baylor sitting on top of it, 22-2 and two on the year. Ohio State is the two seed. Um, you know, fairly competitive bracket, especially that 8-9 matchup. That'll be a very fun game to watch. But since that's the, since that's UNC, Kelsey, who do you who do you see in this south bracket? Um, I have Baylor coming out of the bracket. Um, I will say – I see um, that Baylor-North Carolina matchup. I do think North Carolina beats Wisconsin in the first round. That Baylor-North Carolina matchup will be a fun one in the sense that North Carolina kills you on the boards and kills you inside, and Baylor beats you with a three. So it'll be a battle of two teams that play completely polar opposite games. Um, I do think uh, that'll be a fun matchup. I just think that North Carolina being so young – they don't, they don't quite have the scoring yet. I think that North Carolina team will be dangerous next year and the year after if they stick together. But uh, being so young, I think Baylor's the better team there. And then that Baylor-Purdue matchup, potentially, I think that'll be a fun one to watch as well. So Baylor has some fun matchups in here. Um, I've got Baylor-Ohio State in the lead eight, though, um, and Baylor coming out. I will say um, I think Winthrop is a team to watch out for. Villanova's without their starting point guard. Um, I think that could be another 5-12 uh, upset. That Winthrop team is tough, and Villanova going without your starting point guard in the NCAA tournament is never a good way to go. Winthrop plays crazy. They're fun to watch. They push the ball. They fly up and down the floor. They shoot threes. Like they're, They've got big-time upset potential. Um, that was one I have to watch. I, I, It's a tough one. I picked Villanova. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Winthrop comes out on top of that game. Um, but once again, other than that, I don't have a whole lot in the way of upsets. I see, I see North Carolina beating Wisconsin. I see them beating Baylor as well. Um, and I also think, I also think Florida. Now this is a tough one for me because those are my two my two teams. But uh, I think Florida will beat Virginia Tech, um, and then. It'll be a good game against Ohio State. I'm going to take Florida, but on the just the hopes of an upset. But Ohio State's pretty darn good. I don't I don't know if I can truly see that happen. I think it's the fanboy in me coming out. But uh, I think Florida has a chance to make a run. I'm gonna, you know, Baylor. I think Baylor's 22 and two. They're a great team. 
um, you know, a potential second round matchup with North Carolina, that'd be a very bad matchup for Baylor to have to face. Mm -hmm. But the good news for Baylor is I don't think North Carolina is going to beat Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin takes care of that problem for him just as far as styles go. Um, but if Baylor did have to play North Carolina, that would be a bad, bad matchup. I mean, Baylor doesn't even have a center listed on their roster. And if anybody's seen North Carolina play, they beat you up down low. And North they also, <laughs> and they also have speed. So, I mean, they have speed at the guard position. They may, they're not as skilled as they usually are, which is kind of what has held them back. But they are very long. They're very athletic, and they will. They are very physical. It'd be a, it'd be very fun to see that matchup for me. Um, I think Baylor's coming out though. Like I said, I think Wisconsin will beat North Carolina, and uh, I see Baylor coming out and making it to the Final Four. Uh, in this region, I actually think that Baylor has one of the harder times here for, for a lot of the things you guys have mentioned. But like, even if you progress down and you make it to the Elite Eight. You're going to have my pick to come out of there, Ohio State, staring you right in the face, and Ohio State's playing pretty good ball too. So I, I think Baylor has a hard time coming out of here as the one seed. Um, you know, I, don't, I, I really don't see them being able to do it. You've got quite a few tough games in a row to get there for them, and you're going to start to break down at a certain point. So. A lot of the decisions about this bracket, or all brackets in general to me, has come down to you got UNC as a, a fairly high seed, or fairly low seed, I guess, um, and that I it's hard to bet against Roy Williams. You know, some of those other schools, like we were talking about this in group chat the other day, if Duke somehow managed to slither in as a replacement team, I don't care if they're the 16 seed. I don't know that I could ever bet against a Coach K team in March. You know what I mean? It's just – so the seeding's a little off this year. But um, when it comes down to it, I think the final two teams in this bracket will be um, UNC and Arkansas. And I have Arkansas winning it. Um, Ohio State's good. They got a chance. But I, I'm picking Arkansas to come out of this bracket. All right. I, I think we've all given our picks for the South. Uh, moving on to the Midwest, we got a fairly local-ish team. There's the one seed in Illinois. And then uh, Houston, kind of a surprising college to be a two seed, but being a COVID year might not, or it might make more sense than normal. Tyler, what do you see here in the Midwest region? So I think personally, Illinois is playing the best out of any team in the nation right now. Um, they've got, you know, most teams might have one Real good top 20 player. Illinois has two. Um, they got, you know, maybe the best player in college basketball and A.O. Dusumno, however you say his name. And, but their center, Kofi Cockburn, is also a really good player. <laughs> it's Coburn. And, uh, Coburn? Yeah, they, you pronounce well, it Coburn, apparently. you The C.K. is silent. <laughs> Where's he from? Anyways, uh, <laughs> I think Illinois is playing the best out of anybody in the in the nation. I don't see a lot of threats there. Um, Houston's an interesting team. Houston plays really good defense, but they struggle to score the ball. Um, and so I, I think Illinois comes out of this. I think they're the playing the best in the nation right now. And they started out one of the best. They, they were missing a few uh, their best player there for a couple weeks in February or January, and they hit a little slide, but they're back on top. I uh, uh yeah I, whoops go ahead Cody I think I agree that Illinois is uh is very very good with uh their guard I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his name and Coburn Coburn's a monster down there Rockburn <laughs> but uh <laughs> um coming out of this bracket I have. I have four teams, three of these four teams I'm pretty confident in making it to the semifinals of this bracket. I have Illinois, Oklahoma State, Syracuse is my one team I'm not sold on, but I'm going to put them in there, um, and Houston. Um, and then after that, I have Oklahoma State and Houston in the Elite Eight, and I have Oklahoma State going on to the Final Four because, and this is something I preach all the time, um, when it comes to March Madness and whether it be high school level or whatever, big players show up it, in big time moments in tournaments when the when your season's on the line. 
And I don't know if there's anybody better in college basketball than uh, Cade Cunningham. So he is very, very good. I see him wheeling his team to the Final Four. I don't know if they do much after that. But Illinois is tough. They're going to be hard for Oklahoma State to beat. But if they jump over that hurdle, I see them going all the way to the Final Four. So in this bracket, um, I have Illinois coming out. Um, Coburn's a beast. Um, Kyler's a little crazy saying that Illinois is the best team in the country, though. I think he forgot about Kispert and Timmy and Suggs and Gonzaga. Um, uh, Illinois, I've got them coming out. Georgia Tech, I think um, it's 8-9, so it's not a big uh, upset. But I think Georgia Tech uh, gets loyal to Chicago. Um, I do think um, the 10-7 game is another game to look out for. I think Rutgers will beat Clemson. Um, I actually have Rutgers beating Houston, too. And then um, West Virginia is the team I have playing Illinois in the Elite Eight. Um, I Honestly, if I had to pick the weakest bracket other than the one seed, I think this is it. I don't like this bracket at all um, mm-hmm. for many reasons. Um, but I think I honestly think Illinois cruises to the Final Four in this bracket. I don't know why. I just don't, I don't see a lot of tough matchups for them here. Um, to go back on Illinois, though, is one of the first-round matches I see uh, that I like is Loyola-Chicago. Um, win in their first round match, which would put them up against Illinois in the second be round. A fun game. And Sister Mary has already said she will not attend the games, but she will be praying for the team. Um, and we all saw what that happened last time they were in the national spotlight. They uh, had a hell of a run in the uh, Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, however far they made it that year that uh, Sister Mary was getting all the press. But. Uh, their sweet 16 i think i don't know i illinois is more than likely going to win that game but it'd be a fun one to watch if it gets to it yeah from from like a press hype standpoint illinois versus loyola chicago would be pretty fun like there's there's a lot of directions you could go with that but yeah i i you know i don't see any this bracket like kelsey said is i think inarguably the weakest bracket yeah uh besides illinois but I, I have Illinois cruising out of this bracket, um, you know, really, really kind of untouched, kind of unfazed. And whether that helps them or hurts them when they get out, you know, we'll see. But so that's that's all of our picks. That's all four regions. Um, we've given you guys each person that we think is going to come out. We can go a little further into that. So which which one seed do you think has the easy, easiest path? to the final four and then which one sweet one seed do you think has the hardest path to the final four we've kind of touched on that a little bit already but we'll go ahead and seal that in this is kind of contradictory to my pick like i said because i have oklahoma state coming out of that bracket but in it when it comes to the weakest bracket it's the illinois bracket the uh the midwest so I think, you know, if they overcome that hurdle that I think will be Oklahoma State, I like you guys said, I think all three of you picked them to come out of it. I don't see much uh, much pushback for them other than I like Cade Cunningham and Oklahoma State because um, that's by far the weakest bracket in my opinion. And if Illinois can win their second round game, I think they just, they're a lock for it. Yeah, I agree. That's the weakest bracket. Um, I, I, we already touched on Michigan. Um, I think Michigan's bracket's the toughest. I don't think Michigan's playing as bad as everyone poured on them there for a second because everyone poured on them. I just think they're in a tough bracket, with some tough matchups. Um, but, yeah, I think it's by far Michigan's the toughest bracket and Illinois is the weakest. Yeah, and just to clarify, you know, in every region there is threats to knock off the one seed. So it's not like – there's not a threat to beat them. When we're when we talk about this, we kind of talk about who has to go through the most, you know, threats. And I would agree, Illinois has the least. That that Oklahoma, if they have to match up with Oklahoma State, like Cody said, that's potential for an upset. Um, Cade Cunningham and company. Um, but I don't really see any other, you know, maybe West Virginia, big threats to Illinois. So I, I only see real one big threat to that has a good chance to knock off Illinois. As far as the toughest the toughest road i would i would argue that uh 
uh, I would agree that Baylor has the toughest road because, you know, North Carolina, Ohio State, Arkansas, all teams that, you know, have beaten, proven they can beat good teams. Mm-hmm. I didn't give yeah. my toughest pick, so I'm going to double back on that real quick. Or, yeah, my who has the toughest road. Mm-hmm. Um, Carl, this is going to go against what you said right before we started recording, is you said that you think Gonzaga is just going to breeze through it, that they've got a pretty pretty easy one. No, but, I did not. But uh, Gonzaga, when, He didn't pick Gonzaga to come out of that bracket. Oh well, my bad. My USC. mistake. But anyway, <laughs> when you shorten it down, when you shorten it down to the final four teams of that bracket, when you look with my picks, you got Gonzaga, Virginia, Kansas, Iowa. You know their first couple games might be might be cakewalks for them, but uh, when you get down to the final two rounds of that bracket, I think that's a pretty tough one for Gonzaga or anyone looking to come out of it. I, I think Baylor, you know, Illinois, for the reasons described, has the easiest road as a one seed, I think. But to Kyler's point, I think Baylor has the hardest time. Like, you're potentially staring at North Carolina or Wisconsin, which are both pretty decent programs in your uh, round of 32. Like, that's rough. That is well, very rough. And to that point, nobody wants to play a Wisconsin in the tournament. Just the stop, no. just like Virginia, nobody wants to play against that. Just to wear you down, just kind of one play at the end of the basketball. game. Yeah. yeah. So, so right, with so, how March Madness usually goes, that means um, since we we think that Illinois has the easiest bracket, they're probably going to get knocked out the earliest, and mm-hmm. the other three seeds who we said the hardest are probably all make it to the Final Four. Yep, that's how this goes. Uh, so which team, which, which low seed team do you think makes, makes the deepest run, you know, eight or nine or under, who do you think makes it the furthest this time? I I already touched on my answer to that. Um, I think I have a 12 seed in the sweet 16. I have UC Santa Barbara knocking off Creighton and, uh, Virginia. I don't think they can beat Gonzaga, but that is the, uh, lowest seed that I have going uh, to the Sweet 16. So, yeah, you see Santa Barbara to the Sweet 16 is my pick. I'm going to have to say, obviously, uh, Georgetown would probably have to be my pick. I know they're only hot here recently, but it's the right time of the year to be hot. Um, I think they can possibly make a little bit of a run. If I – Winthrop is another team that I didn't even pick them to beat Villanova but I think they have the firepower to make a deep run if they do. Um, and then it's not really much of a uh, of a gambling pick being an eight seed, but I think North Carolina can make a run too. Yeah, I mean, anytime a blue blood is a yeah. higher seed, you're just going to kind of It's not really a hot take, but it's just something that could easily happen. I'm going to think... break... Oh, go ahead, Kai. I'm going to break your rule, Carl, real quick, and I'm going to say... Look out for UConn. The last time they were a seven seed, Kimball Walker, they won the national title. And they've won seven of eight. So I'm going to say look out for UConn and Dan Hurley. That's why you wanted seven seed or lower earlier before the podcast started. Going with the Duke, <laughs> Maybe. Duke guy, Dan Hurley. He's right. Dan here. Hurley knows a little something about March. Yeah, I think uh, Rutgers as a 10 seed in the Midwest bracket. We've talked about how the Midwest bracket is one of the probably lighter brackets. And so, you know, I I think they could make a little bit of a run. Houston would be a problem if they get past Clemson. But I I think a Rutgers, you know, with how good that, that the big 10 was, they're in the big 10, right? Yeah. Yeah. With how good the, with how good the big 10 was this year, you know, they played against a lot of stiff competition and I can see them, you know, I'm I'm not going to necessarily pick them to, well, yeah, I would. I would have them go into the Elite Eight. Uh, so I think Rutgers can make some noise this year as a double-digit seed. And, of course, I already called out. I think there's a 14 over three upset, but I think that's just a one-time fluke, Abilene Christian over Texas. All right. So, well, so one thing one thing we haven't talked about um, is Iona uh, is coached by – wait, is it Iona? Wait. The 15 seed, yeah, in Alabama. 
Um, I think it's Iona, who is coached by uh, the old Louisville coach. It's he's the fifth. It's the fifth team he's went to the. Uh, Patino. Yeah. Patino? Patino. He is coaching. I think it's Iona. Oh yeah, Rick Patino coaching Iona. It's the fifth team he's made the tournament with. That ties him for the most all time. Um, so that's one thing of note. Not that I'm a big Patino fan, but uh, just a thing of note there. All right, so we've all given our final four picks. So how do you see those matchups coming out? Who do you see winning the national title? Well, I'll go first. I've got Illinois obviously playing uh, Baylor. i got Illinois winning that one. And I've got Alabama playing Gonzaga. I've got Gonzaga winning that one. So Gonzaga, Illinois. I've got Illinois taking home the title. Gonzaga is going to come up a game short again. I've got. I'm all in on Illinois. So uh, I'm gonna go next. My final four is uh is Kansas, Michigan, Arkansas, Oklahoma State. I'm taking Michigan against Kansas. I'm taking Oklahoma State against Arkansas, and then I'm taking Michigan to win the national championship. I think they looked really good early in the year. I know they've struggled down the stretch. I don't care. They're they're really good. They're well coached. It's hard to give Juwan Howard props, but he's a good coach. But I'm going to tell you why Kyler might be correct. It's the rule of 16 with Illinois. 16 years ago in 2005, they made the Final Four. 16 years before that in 1989 was the time before that they made the Final Four. So they're pretty much guaranteed to be in the Final Four. And if they can finish it out from there, it's it's a wrap. (laughs) All right, I'm hey, writing Cody. this down for 2037. <laughs> Cody, yeah. do you know who they board. lost to in the national championship 16 years yeah, ago? Right here, baby. Raymond Felton, cool. Shaw May. Yeah. Or Shaw cool, cool. All right. Go um, ahead, anyway, Carl. let's go back. Um, <laughs> fi- my final four I've got Gonzaga, Florida State, Baylor, and Illinois. I've got Gonzaga beating Florida State. I've got. Illinois beating Baylor, and I don't like that I have the same teams in the championship as Kyler. It makes me want to change it, but I've got Gonzaga (laughs) beating Illinois in the national championship. Um, This Gonzaga team is going to be the first undefeated team since Indiana in 1976, (sighs) coached by Bobby Knight. Um, This team, I'm the type of person who, like Kentucky, the year they were undefeated, I picked against Kentucky. I don't think teams go undefeated because it's just a tough thing to do win every game. This team is talented, and they are deep. They are a good team. They're better than any and team Gonzaga has. How many That's Gonzaga sure. teams have we said that about? Since before I've never said Adam Gonzaga Morrison, the national every Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Gonzaga team is going to Gonzaga. It's just going to be in the national championship this year. I've never said Gonzaga is the best team in the nation. I've never. Ever. I'm not saying not you ha- you personally have, but there have been so many great Gonzaga teams but, that they just the fizzle out. Does it now. The thing is, Gonzaga is usually like a top eight team. Like I think they're, I think they're pretty much considered the best team in the country this year by most people. Gonzaga is not usually considered the best team in the country. They're usually considered a good team, not the best team in the country. The thing you guys are all failing to realize is USC comes out of that region. <laughs> so uh, I've got USC playing Alabama, and then I've got Ohio State playing Illinois. I see Illinois beating Ohio State, and I see Alabama beating USC. That's where their dream run ends. And then I also have Illinois winning the national title. This Jeez. Year. We have two guys picking Illinois, led by a and guy with the last name. Led by a guy with the last name Cockburn. Coburn. <laughs> oh, my bad. I, <laughs> I mean, I technically live in a Big Ten state now, so I, I actually – I don't know if you want to talk about this. I had a hard time – weeding out big 10 teams this year like the big team is pretty darn the big 10 the is big pretty darn solid top heavy they've got a lot of good teams out there i mean with that yeah. the big 10 and you know just overall looking at you can just tell there was a pandemic because i mean the blue bloods duke kentucky not in it um you can just tell the brackets kind of been turned upside down so it should be a fun year do you guys want to know why you're wrong about illinois though Big Ten Go hasn't ahead, won Kelsey. a national championship since 2000. It's not going to happen this year. You guys are talking about Gonzaga. The last team in the Big Ten to win a national championship. When's the last time a West Coast Conference team won a championship? Yeah, you know, there's a first time for everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's crazy how that works. <laughs> huh. Weird. Oh, how the turntables have turned. <laughs> All right, Michael how Scott. The turns have tables. All righty. 
So we're going to do a what was he thinking? I believe Kai had one picked out. And if he doesn't, I have a what were they thinking? Yeah, yeah. I would just like to say to Creighton, say D, you know, if you would have just listened to the podcast, <laughs> you shouldn't have reinstated Greg <laughs> McDermott. Yeah, there are five seed in the tournament this year. But if anybody saw the news yesterday, their best recruit, probably one of the best recruits they've ever got, Ty Ty Washington, ranked number 32 in the nation, backed out. And there's a reason, there's only one reason why he backed out and why and you I feel it, it is going to be a struggle to get recruits there. I, You know, I feel bad for Greg McDermott. He said something he shouldn't have said. He apologized. I don't always think that, you know, people make mistakes. But the there is a business side to college basketball, and I don't feel they made the best business decision to continue their success. And you did call that yeah. last week, too. You said that it would hurt their recruiting if they didn't fire him. And I think we all unanimously agreed that he should have been fired. And, you know, it was the school's decision not to, which is whatever. But the repercussions of that decision are showing already. Now, granted, if you fire the head coach that a player is committed to, that player is probably going to decommit anyway, I would guess. So they were probably going to lose that kid after that was said by McDermott, regardless of whether he was fired or not. But you didn't fire him, and you did lose the recruit that was probably your best recruit of all time. And it, that's got to sting a little bit. And on that, you said they were probably going to lose the recruit anyway. That's probably true, but it's gonna, it won't be the first or the last time it happens if you keep McDermott. It's going to be something that continues to happen because mm-hmm. of those comments. Oh, yeah. All right, and then uh, I'm going to throw in my what was he thinking because it's time for a little baseball in our lives, boys. So the Mets this week, I don't know if you guys saw this or not. They were practicing. They fielded 27 fun-go ground balls and pop-ups in a row and celebrated like they won Game 7 of the World Series. Um, A, what in the hell are you doing? Like, it, it doesn't make sense. Is there not somebody in your organization that sits there and says, hey, this is dumb, don't do this? Like, every every pro organization should have somebody on the payroll, about $85,000 a year that just reads through Twitter, is like, oh, don't do that. Like, you guys are just stupid. Just don't. And where, like, it's just Where do I apply for this job at? Oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> I can do that. I like, can do that. That would be the easiest thing in the world. Like, what are you doing? Why are you celebrating? You're the Mets. Like, you're not – don't don't celebrate game seven of the world series in march you're months away seven months away from that damn game like and you you haven't been there and since well the carl, subway series in 01 or whatever it was yeah, 2001. Carl, they know that they have to go through the braves to win that division so that's already just a done deal they aren't they aren't going to be able to make that happen so they're just celebrating spring training baby my thing. I do think say, I do think they're like an eighty win team, 82, 83, But yeah, they're not as good as the Braves. My thing All about I it say is, is, go ahead, girls. I like to see Carl fired up, so I can't wait for baseball season now because it's Dude, taking I'm ready. until we talk about baseball to see him get worked up in this podcast. And he's got a hundred and eighty-two games to talk about it. So <laughs> no, it's one hundred fifty-two. It's one hundred fifty-two this year. One hundred fifty-two because of COVID. It's, it's normally 162, but it's 152. Yeah, whatever. Year. Yeah, he was close. Um, Cody doesn't watch until game. like April 8th anyway, or yeah. August 8th anyway, so he doesn't care. So back to the Mets real quick. My thing is, why are you celebrating Game 7 of the World Series? Are you that unconfident in yourself? I'm celebrating like we won <laughs> Game 4. yourself as a franchise. Yeah, <laughs> celebrating Game 4. 4-0 sweep, we're out of here, baby. Let's go. Why are you waiting until Game 7 to close it out? Oh, man. All righty. Well, I think that's about going to wrap it up for us this week. Appreciate you listening, tuning in. Um, we do have some face masks available, so reach out to any one of us. Watch for us on social media. Please, please, please watch the YouTube video and subscribe to it. Even if you listen on Spotify like I do. I listen on Spotify, but I still am subscribed to our YouTube channel because I'm a loyal follower of the 4th and 30 podcast. You can find us also on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, Cody's working on a TikTok, so if you're into this new ticky ticky talk talk craze, you can find that there and see what that's about. 
the but boomer anyways, in me posted pre- the same clip four times last weekend. So go like <laughs> one of those four clips. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Just one of the four. If you can find one of the four, <laughs> double tap it or whatever they do on TikTok these days. I don't know. But we appreciate you guys listening in. or gals. And uh, be good out there. Tell your grandma. Go hey, heels. Grandma. Yeah, grandma, the pot, it's going up. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs>